Hi, this is example number 7.7 .7, and here we have a beam AP and we have only one distributed force which is 6 kN. As you recall, the first step is always to find the external reactions and for to do that we will draw our free body diagram of our beam. And then since we have a thin at A, we have two reactions at A, AY and AX, and we have one reaction at B, BY. And then I will write my distributed load, I need the distance, which is 9. I will place it as a concentrated load. The concentrated load is the area on the, under the curve, so we know that it's base, which is 9, times high, which is 6, divided by 2. That, that gives me 27, and I will place it at two-thirds of the skinny side or one-third of the heavy side. So I will place it right here, and that's 27 kilonewtons, and it's either at one-third of the heavy side, which is a one-third of nine is three, or two-thirds of the heavy side, which is six meters. Now that we have our free body diagram, we can uh, apply our equations of equilibrium to find the force. When we add forces in X, we find that there isn't any axial forces. So I take moment respect to, for example, point A, six, negative six times 27 plus nine points BY is equals to C. BY is equal to 18 kilo newtons. And then I add forces in Y, and I get that AY minus 27 plus BY is equal to 0. Therefore, AY is equal to 9, right? 9 kilo newtons to go all the way to 27. Okay, so we found our external reactions. Now that we found external reactions, we have to analyze our internal reactions. And as we see, we will use the section method, and we will cut our beam as many times as we have events. As we see here, we have only events at the beginning of the beam, at the end, and only one distributed load. So I will cut in any section of the beam at a distance x. I will draw the left side of my cut. So for the internal forces, I will draw the free body diagram of the section, right? And in this case, I, will, I can draw either the left side or the right side. I will draw the left side because sometimes it's easy to manage a triangular or a linear, right? This is a linear, not a constant, a linear a distributed force from the skinny sides of the triangle. So it will be from the left side. Okay, so my free body diagram is uh, this piece and is at X. I have my distributed load, but my distributed load, I want to place it as a concentrated load. Therefore, I need this height over here. And what will be that height over here? Well, I can use similar triangle. Let me do it here in this little piece. So here is H, this is six, and this is X, and this is nine, right? Therefore, H over X will be equals to six over nine. Therefore, H will be equals to two thirds X. So I can say that this H over here is two thirds X. So the area under that curve will be base, that is X, high, which is two thirds X, divided by two. So this here, I can place it as a single force, right? That we, the value of that single force will be. I said it's two thirds X, times x divided by two, so it's one third x squared. And where would be that located? At 
one third of the heavy sides or two thirds of the uh, skinny side, right? I also, also have my external reactions, which are a y, nine kilo newtons, and I have my internal forces. My internal forces will be, I will ignore my force in the actual direction because we know that nothing is happening in the actual direction of the beam, and I have my shear force and my bending moment. Now that I have my free body diagram, I can apply my equations of equilibrium, and I will add forces in Y, and I have nine minus one third X squared minus V equals zero. Therefore, V is equals to nine minus one third X squared. And this is in kilo newtons. Now I, uh, I take moment, I will take moment the, in the point where I cut, and I have my moments at O will be equals to negative 9x, right, plus my, for, my moment produced by this distributed load that I put it as a concentrated load, which will be equals to one third x squared times x over three. And then plus the moment equals to zero. So I solve for my moment and I get nine x minus a x cube over nine. The units are kilo newton meters. Okay, so I got this expression for my moment. So now that I have those values, now I can uh, draw my diagram. I will substitute here. I have a concentrated load of nine kilonewtons, and I have a concentrated load over here of 18 kilonewtons. And I have my shear diagram and I have my moment diagram. Uh, let's see, I, I always like to evaluate my x, right? When I have x equals to zero, my v is equals to nine. When x is equals to nine, I have nine squared over three and negative nine. So I have my, my value of my v is equals to negative eight. In this case too, right, I can evaluate by x equals zero, I have that moment is equals to zero. And for x equals nine, I have nine times nine, nine eighty-one. And here I have nine cubed over nine, which is eighty-one. So it's also zero. So when we try to draw the shear, we have that for x equals to zero, I start with nine. Okay, so when I go to x equals nine, I end up with negative 18. So I start with nine and I go to negative 18. How do I go from nine to negative 18? With a quadratic curve, negative. So it means that it's a quadratic curve, concave down. So I go with something like that. Where this is positive and this is negative. I actually could find where does that point cuts, right, the axis. It's very important to analyze what happened when we have a discontinuity. Here we have a concentrated load, load of nine kilonewtons. So, and here we have a jump of nine. So we see that it starts at zero and has a discontinuity of nine, which is the same magnitude of the concentrated load. And here the same, we have negative 18. And we have here a concentrated load of 18. So it starts at zero and ends at zero. That gives me a hint that is correct. Then I have in the moment diagram, I start at zero and end up at zero. You can demonstrate what we have done it in the theory that this curve over here represents the derivative of this curve. So 
this here is a cube that goes from zero to zero. So it goes up and then down. And it will have a maximum where the shear is zero. So I maybe I did not draw it uh, proportional, so we have to find where that point is located. But this curve is a cubic curve that goes from zero to zero in a cubic and it's concave down too because there is negative, right? The derivative, so it's something like that. And this is a positive value. And then if we make this equals to zero to find that point, right? So we make the shear equals to zero. And I solve for x, I get that x is equal, I have that value over here, is equals to 5.20. So I actually have this value over here that x is equal to 5.20. So I can take this value of the where the shears become zero and that will me, give me the, if I plug this number into my expression for the moment, it will give me the maximum moment of the beam. It's a cubic and we say that 9x minus x cubed over 9, and I plug this value in this equation and I get this maximum. And the maximum value is 31.2 kilo newtons meters. And why is that a value important? Because when I am going to design the beam, I have to take the maximum load, and you will Learn that in the next class that follow this class that is studied in mechanics of materials. But you need to know where the maximum is located and what is the maximum, what is the value of that maximum.